I, I want to welcome you all here tonight. Glad to see so many of you. Um, I, I want to start the evening off on a, I don't want to start it this way, but um, I, I feel like we need to have a moment of silence for the people who died in the, um, the boat accident off of Santa Barbara. Um, there was a person from Soquel Creek Water, uh, someone who had worked for the city of Santa Cruz, and there were other others from this general area. So if I could ask for a moment of silence on their behalf, please. Thank you. Um, could, um, we have roll call, please. Rick Moran? Here. President Henry? Here. Bob Pulse? Here. Lou Her Ferris? Here. And Steve Swan is absent, excused. Um, I think we need a vote to excuse. Can we uh, excuse him, please? Yeah. Director Moran? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Pulse? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Thank you. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? The staff has none. Thank you. Okay, oral communications. Um, at this time, you may talk about anything that's not on the agenda. If it's on the agenda, you have to wait for the item to come up. And the way that's going to work when items come up board will talk, go to the public for comment, back to the board to decide on what they're going to do. Um, how many people want to talk about something that's not on the agenda tonight? Okay, I only see that. Okay, you get five minutes. Okay. Um, what? Oh, the seat for, uh, this up for election? Like, when is it up for election? What is? Because I saw that there's a, the, one of the board seats is up for election. That was last, that was the last board meeting. Oh, okay. That's our, this is our new board member here, Rick Moran. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, you. I have a question. Um, I, this is my second meeting to attend, yes. and uh, I figured out that the board meets every two weeks. It's the first and first I mean, Thursday and the third Thursday. So it meets twice a month. Mm -hmm. Right, twice a month. Sometimes so, there could be more than. My question is <clears throat> why so frequently, since there's a paid staff that's professional with professional department heads. Why does the board meet, need to meet so frequently? Let, let, let me it explain it to you. The, the, this is how it works. If you could see a flow chart. I looked at the flow the, chart. The board is the top of, of the flow chart. Yeah, but you don't do any of the work. <laughs> I, if you don't mind, we're, 
At the top, we have two employees, the district manager and the attorney, and then the district manager is in charge of all the employees. What the board does is create policy and we have a fiscal responsibility. That's our two main things. So it's the typical board responsibility, which anywhere else would meet no more than once a month. Why don't you submit a comment sheet somewhere? Well, I was just, I wanted, to see, I wanted to see if yeah. there was a, like in bylaws or something. Well, well we have uh, our board policy manual. It says we meet twice a month. Um, well, I there, just wonder if that's the smartest thing to do, given uh, the amount of time it control. takes to conduct a meeting and to support a meeting. You're out of order. You can write a list. Uh, you're not on uh, the board. Uh, just, 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 uh, uh, okay, uh, let's, uh, no, uh, none, none, none of this back and forth. You know, I, I can't argue with you about it. This is policy. This is what we do. We have a lot of things we need to do. So... All right. Okay. That's good. Thank you. So, Elaine? Uh, uh, Elaine Fresco Felton. I just have a quick question. Of what are your plans about replacing Jen Nicholson? We're working on it. So, will you be advertising or how? how? Yes, we're moving forward. Okay. If you want to contact me offline, I can yeah. give you more input. We are moving forward. Okay. <clears throat> Any, uh, Mark? Good evening, uh, President Henry. Uh, I've probably have repeated this several times, but so this will be a repeated message. Uh, as you know, members of the council uh, of the board are members of the Santa Margarita Ground Water Agency. We have two uh, members that are uh, irregular members at those meetings on the last Thursday of every month in uh, Scotts Valley. Um, I would like to have some kind of uh, semblance of summary a summary of what is going on with that regional water agency in terms of policies, uh, fiscal impacts, uh, capital facilities, some kind of status report reporting to the capital facilities and engineering uh, <coughs> subcommittee so we can be apprised of what's going on with the status or we're aware as members of San Lorenzo Valley Water District what the impacts are, what the future policy directions are. Thank you. I think that's a great thing. <laughs> that I'll tell you one thing, Santa Margarita right now isn't doing a whole lot. They're having um, some kind of workshops, but they aren't doing a whole lot, but we hope to give you more information in the future. Uh, yes? Yes, um, I'm a little disappointed in the number of administration committee meetings that have been canceled this year. We've been meeting since March, seven meetings, and we've canceled three of them. This last one was canceled uh, the day before the meeting, um, and I, I see the, the board agenda, and there's a couple items on this agenda that we probably could have, could have um, had some input on. So yeah, I'm a little disappointed that, that, we've, that we've missed so many meetings, and uh, <coughs> we didn't have the chance to address uh, or, or get feedback on uh, in particular, the strategic part. Uh, that, that's before the board tonight. Okay, thanks. Um, yes, you with the back row, with yeah. the white hair. Yeah, I'm just going to introduce myself. I'm Tony Haney, Santa Cruz. Uh, I live in, up in the hills there on Boulder Brook Drive when I was very small. Essen Brooks, Apple Orchard. No water. Well, our water is a slew, so forth and so on. Uh, I'm trustee for the newly granted Thirst Force uh, Irrevocable Family Trust. It's the property with the road that goes up to the diversion plant. I submitted a, uh, a letter, sent a letter to, to uh, the board, and I've spoken with Rick. Uh, there's some things that the trust would like to see taken care of, and I'm hoping that I can work with some people, particularly uh, your environmental committee. And then there's another uh, issue, and that's Homeland Security's uh, <clears throat> providing security, more security for our facility up there. Um, the county hasn't really done anything that I can tell 
Uh, I've talked to the supervisors uh, and also the other emergency response uh, folks in the county, in fact all of them, they all kind of point their finger, well, what's, what's uh, the water district going to do? What I'd like to do is uh, work with your environmental person, and maybe uh, Mr. Boots uh, says it, uh, talk about the issues up there and uh, sort it out. <clears throat> the other thing also is access. Uh, I was talking to Rick, and uh, we can't find any kind of an agreement uh, that's written or handshaken or anything about the access road that goes up to that facility, and we don't know where the where the property lines are. And I've asked county to uh, survey the road down there and survey the area up there. Of course, I got an expected uh, a dismissal of the idea. However, because it's a homeland security issue, and there are tens of millions of dollars in grants. For the, for the state and the nation <clears throat> in order to secure our infrastructures. I think we need to do a much better job up there. It's just my opinion. Uh, but between, between your staff uh, in the future, I'd like to get with you sometime, maybe set up a meeting, and uh, we can get the uh, other county uh, emergency people involved, maybe we'll get some money and secure that area up there the way it should be done. Anybody can go up there with a tanker and some chemicals and plug it into the system up there in a heartbeat. And so far up there, there's no one, no one will ever see what's going on and they just take off. I'm not saying that, a, that hardcore black ops can't do that, but we have so much crazy in the state today in the United States, uh, angry people. So I'd like to tighten up that, that business also because I'm on the road at the end of the, the block, the trust is, uh, we can secure that area. It had been in the past. There was a conflict, it looked like an inverse uh, uh, takeover of the land and so forth and so on. That's, that's history. But anyway, I'd like to work with you again, it's Tony Henry. Uh, and I'll be contacting you and, and hopefully we'll sort all this business out, make, make things more secure up there. Uh, but I do, I want to leave a list of the environmental factors that uh, the trust is required. This will be in perpetuity. And uh, it's all about uh, corridors, uh, the environmental, typical stuff of the con conservancy. And uh, I'm hoping we can work together. Uh, you, thank you for your time. If uh, you'd please give you, your list to the secretary. Uh, I'll leave a couple pieces of paper here for you. Then I'm going to get out of here. Okay. Go, go, go home. And thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Watch out for the cords. Uh, anybody else have something to say that's uh, not on the agenda? Okay. All right. Let's move ahead here. So, um, first item is board policy manual. Of the I, 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 this, is, this is the trust. That's what we need to do. Oh, no, I mean Well, the next item? I'm sorry, I thought you meant this gentleman. <laughs> okay, uh, are we ready to move ahead? I recommend that the board review the memo and discuss the possible action for updating uh, the 2019 board policy. Uh, uh, this was uh, at the request of Director Folk, so I'm going to ask him to, to step in here and give uh, a description. Absolutely, if that's okay. Okay. Um, as you know, this is the board policy manual, and board members are free to uh, make suggestions to the other board members about policy changes that may be appropriate from time to time. Uh, there's three changes that I'm proposing at this point. Some clarification around the um, uh, board calendar um, in terms of the fact that we don't always hold meetings on the first and third. Third, these are some months where we don't. Um, second change is to uh, reduce the, or I don't know if it's reduce or clarify, but for special meetings, a $25 stipend instead of potentially the $100 stipend that we might be getting now. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, the special meetings are supposed to be typically one topic or very small topics. In the past, they've morphed into being more regular meetings where um, I think that $100 stipend may have made sense, but 
I think what we're trying to do is make special meetings special, and they should be uh, relatively short uh, for that. And the third change is uh, in response to the recent uh, legal troubles that um, we had with regard to conflict of interest issues. And basically, what I'm recommending is that the board would go through a more transparent and more fully disclosed process prior to taking on any defense of a um, director where conflict of interest is involved. If it's not involved, these additional processes don't uh, take effect. But if it is, then there's a greater level of disclosure required. And this is in line with um, the recent uh, augmentation of our conflict of interest uh, requirements that we passed, uh, requiring us not only state we have a conflict, but also what that conflict is. So those are the three primary changes. Um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer, otherwise. Um, any comment? I have a suggestion, uh, a proposed change to section 15, meeting stipends, since we're already in that section. I propose, which is actually a proposal made by the board president some time back at a board meeting, and that is that we change the stipend for the directors from $100 a meeting to $50 a meeting. Because I think it's just as important for us to show we can cut costs as well as ask dis district staff to do the same. Did you have anything you want to say, Rick? Um, well, I appreciate um, Director Ferris's point of view on that. I uh, agree to some degree. Uh, um, I don't know if we need to go 50% uh, reduction, but we should. We've, uh, I think, this board has asked the, the water district to consider a 5% reduction for their budgets. I think we should at least do that. But I'm, I have no problem with uh, reducing the stipend for special meetings from $100 to $25, and I have no problem with reducing the overall stipend from $100 to $50. Okay, well, I have other issues here. To me, this should have gone to the admin committee. Should have been talked about in the admin committee. Because there's a couple of things here in the board policy that I don't care for. Um, now, in the past, when we passed this board policy, Director Fultz was on the admin committee, and I, was, I wasn't exactly okay with him coming up with the plan, but it pretty much went, on, went for it, except I did have issues on a number of items, and they were changed. But we do have an admin committee, and Director Fultz and I are on the admin committee. And I think this should have gone to the admin committee and not just come here to the board. I, I mean, I, I've got a couple of things here I would like to see changed. And I didn't even know about this until you requested it to be on the agenda. May I respond to it? Yes, you may. Okay. So my understanding is that items um, need to be referred to the committees by the board. That is, it is not an appropriate um, path to take for a board member to just say, I want an item on the admin committee. Because what that does is that bypasses the full board and their involvement in the process. This is not being brought to the, to the board saying, take it or leave it, or we have to vote on it tonight. We as a board can always refer something to committee for it to be processed, discussed, debated, added to, deleted from, whatever. So I'm not sure what you meant, but if we want to make it so that board members can take things directly to committee, then I think we need to clarify that in the bylaws because that's not clear in there right now. Okay, you're the board chair. 
you make up the agenda, uh, and I don't really remember anything coming from the board about some of the things that we've talked about at admin. The staff will bring things to the committee as we have operated in the past, but for things that come from individual board members, it's not clear that we have the authority to do that. If you wish to change the board policy to make that clearer, I'd be happy to do that. But there are some things, I think, where the board needs to be involved in a decision about whether or not to refer something to the committee. For example, the strategic plan being brought tonight is the same thing. It's not meant to be voted on tonight, necessarily. There's a process we may decide to go through, and one of those options may be to refer it to committee. So if your desire is to refer this to committee, I'd support that. That's my design. Excellent. Yes. It's, it's my understanding that individual board members could refer items to the, uh, to the agenda for the administration committee. I've seen it happen in that committee. So I, I disagree, Bob. Um, I think it's totally appropriate for a, a board member to say, you know, here's an item that, that somebody's requested be on the board of directors meeting agenda, but you know what? No, that's more appropriate to refer that back to the administration committee We've talked about the strategic plan, I think, in our last meeting, or the meeting before that in the administration committee, and now all of a sudden this draft that nobody's heard of pops up on this, on this meeting tonight. So I don't want to get into that because that's a later agenda item. Yes, I, please don't I, I get disagree me. with your assessment that individual board members can't refer something to an administration committee um, agenda. If I may respond to that, I think there are, I think there are great, so first of all, it is not clear to me, and so if that is your understanding, then absolutely that should be something we clear up, and as part of the referral to the committee, we should take a look at that. I also think there are some things that are substantive to the board, the policy manual, the strategic plan, that really need to come to the board first before it gets referred out to a committee potentially because of the fact that these are board ownership documents. And so um, that's, my, that's my belief. I think that if I were to have taken something like the strategic plan directly to the board, I could have been criticized for bypassing the board, right? So, I mean, that's, that, that, so either way, uh, criticism could come. My assessment of this is that this should come to the board. The board should decide what to do. And the board wishes to refer it to committee. Let's do that. I have to say that I feel that I've been bypassed in this as a board member, as a committee member. Absolutely. <laughs> That's why I feel. How could you be bypassed with something that comes to the board for a referral? This is not something that we're voting on necessarily tonight. We don't well, have is, to. Was that clear we are going to vote on It's this always day? clear that anything that comes to the a board agenda isn't necessarily voted on. Well, at that's that time. true, but. Well, of course that's clear. It wasn't clear, but it, it's not clear. None of us are mine. Nope. So, so let's clear it up. Yes. I think uh, Director Fultz has spoken mm -hmm. that these are suggestions that he has that he'd like to see. Um, to the board policy. And if it needs to be referred back with those suggestions, referred back to the administ administration committee, then let's do that. I think Lois is in agreement with that. And if that's the proper place for it to be, then it can go through there, get its hearing, and they can come back to us with their recommendations. Okay. So, yes, you'd like to speak? Thank you. Uh, Barbara Springer Felton. Um, perhaps uh, I have one point of clarification first. When a board member has something they want to bring up, doesn't it go lowest to you yes. to um, and to define how it shows on the on this? Um, anything a board member asks that's district business to be on the agenda. I must put it on the agenda. Oh, thank you. Okay. And my suggestion is that in future when these things come up that it be stated as, you know, a request to refer to committee for 
a board policy adjustment. And I'd like to thank you very much for the things you said related to that, because I totally agree this needs to go to committee. We need to have more public places for public input before something appears on the agenda as something that we all think you're going to vote on. Okay. Uh, Peter? Thank you. Peter Del Bumble would be. Um, I had a couple substantive comments on one of the changes, and I don't know, it looks like this is going to get referred to committee. Is this yes. the time to make those, or should I send them to committee, or how should that be handled? Well, we haven't decided what we're doing yet. Should I wait to see? <laughs> well, no, because right, me, you get to say what you're going to say. We are decide. These are both on the. I don't know the section. Uh, but you can't talk about the strategic no, point. No, it's not possible. It's on the. Uh, it's pages 36 and 37 of the agenda. It's a conflict of interest change that, that Bob talked about. Um, just a couple points. Um, And I think that greater transparency and consideration is great. It's all good. Um, I don't know, and I don't know if you've checked with, with Gina or council about this. Um, I don't know if it's, if it's appropriate to discuss the things in public because they're potential litigation. Under the Brown Act, you have public discussion of this, and I don't know if that's appropriate, just something you should be looked at. And the second thing was um, on section capital B, small b, you have, so you, you set forth what the board needs to do before agreeing to defend the director against the conflict of interest claim. And you say you, you need to find a couple things, make determinations. But B, B says that the board finds there's no evidence that, there's, that there was fraud or, I forget the rest of the language is. Malicious. Yeah. And, that's an inappropriate standard. It needs to be like A and C, where you make a determination that it doesn't appear that there was fraud, et cetera, rather than no evidence. Because no evidence can be one person's claim. And it wouldn't be appropriate to deny the defense of that because one person has a problem with it. The board has to actually make a determination that it doesn't appear that there's fraud or um, malicious, malicious intent. intent. That was my time. Thank you. All right. Uh, Chuck? Um, I agree very much that this needs to go to admin. It, it also, um, the item that Peter was just, I mean, the other two items are fairly, the first and second item, right. are fairly innocuous. They're right. not, okay, and you could pass those tonight as far as I'm concerned. Um, but the, the one on director legal liabilities is huge. And then, of course, this is written, you know, they start getting one specific, you know, set of cases that they came before the district. Um, you know, in addition to what Peter said, you know, the obligation to defend does not depend upon whether there's insurance coverage. And if that needs to be discussed in this process, that appears in here. You're going to go out okay, and ask about what the coverage determination is. So this should, it should go to admin for some discussion as to the uh, appropriateness. And if you want to refer the whole thing and discuss the other two, great. Um, you should figure out a time to for the board to discuss this when Gina is present in person. Um, so for no other reason than that, wait until the okay, time that you're here is here so that that can be a full, com you know, easy, intelligible discussion with Gina. And you know, if I were a director on this and I was you know, on the board and I was being asked to make certain findings, I would be scared to that I would make a decision that would be not smart for me to make okay, in that. And it seems to me that I get a feeling that what you, the board is they, is proposing if they implement this thing is that you have to find um, that the board has to find some evidence, find guilt. And they're in some sense sort of analyzing the case before you decide how to handle it. And um, at least this question that I'm bringing up should, and which may be erroneous, should have an attorney explaining the background behind this. And we don't have an attorney here tonight that I know of that is prepared to give the background on this. Gina is on the phone. She's yeah, but, yeah, but it's kind of hard. It's hard to do that from, yeah. from that distance. Mm -hmm. So, um, and of course, the same thing about, you know, having it go to the appropriate committee. And the committees have well enough to find charters that they don't have to go to the board for everything that comes to them, that the board has never acted in that manner. Um, I, I think that's a red herring in this discussion. Uh, Virgil. Um, yes, hi, Virgil Champlin. Um, 
I guess I'm kind of impressed by the number of people that say this needs to go to the admin committee for discussion, and then they proceed to discuss it here. Um, <laughs> isn't that, you know, kind of, okay, fine, I go to the admin committee, that, that, that's a good use of the admin committee, I agree with that. But having a director, and this is, this is probably going to be something you need to ask council, asking a director who's not on the ad, admin committee to discuss, to have something discussed by the admin committee might be considered a serial communication of a quorum of the board of directors. And that may not be a good idea under the Brown Act. Don't know. Council's call. Thank you. Uh, could you explain that a little bit more to me? Point of order. Because, because, because what? Point of order, I think I can help Virgil explain it in a way that you can understand this. We, the, the subject at hand from the agenda is changes to the policy manual as proposed in the agenda packet. We're in, now we're talking about whether or not it should go back to committee. We either need to send it back to committee or start talking about the changes only. We're way off topic here, in my opinion. Okay. Um, Mark? Hi, Mark. Thank you for that moment. Uh, this is very similar. Uh, I don't think this is as complicated as where it should be. I think Bob Fultz and, or, excuse me, Director Fultz and Ferris are onto something here. There's no reason why you can take a strategic plan, which is a living document. This is a policy manual. A policy manual. It's still a living document. It can be changed in committee, referred back to committee, by the total board, it's any incremental amendments can be changed during the year. Those sections that are amended can be brought forward to the board for a deliberation and a decision. It doesn't mean the whole policy manual changes. Granted, the language has to be there describing that process. So I think we're making this more complicated than it really is. Thank you. Anybody else? So, okay. Uh, thank you. At the risk of continuing the conversation more, I'm looking actually at the policy manual right now. There is nothing, there is no language in here that states a board member can submit something directly to a committee. If we wish to have that, that is a good thing. Perhaps it's a good thing to do, then we need to make sure it's in here. It's also ambiguous as to how agenda items get on the agenda submitted by a board member. And I would very much appreciate it if I'm going to be criticized for how that happened, that we actually take the opportunity to clarify that so that everybody understands how that should be. If it's not specifically stated, I'm not sure what the problem is here. Okay. And I'm looking right at the document right now. All right. Uh, what does this board wish to do here? Go to committee? Or what? Who's looking at me? Should I talk no. first? No, okay. <laughs> so. uh, I, I recommend that we put it back to committee. Okay. I'll second that. Do we need a vote? I mean, um, I, don't think so. I guess I should have changed that to motion. No, no, we, don't, we don't. I don't think we need a vote on it. Yeah, we don't have to. So. so so yeah, we're just yeah, are you there? I'm here. I, I would I would recommend um, in this instance to just make that a motion and vote on it. Um, it's not always necessary to, to be that formal to send something to a committee, but since it's an item before the board and that's the decision that it seems like the board's inclined to make, I, I just recommend formalizing it with a motion. So Okay. Are you gonna make a motion? I move that we take the discussion of the changes to the uh, the board policy manual back to the admin committee. And I will second that. And can I, do we have a discussion about that motion? We're still so, in discussion. Okay. I would recommend that we set a time limit for this. That there are two administration meetings, committee meetings, or <laughs> one, however long it is, and that uh, the particular points that you raised, Bob be part of that discussion. Uh, and this is uh, council, that sounded like a substituted motion? <laughs> no, just discussing the motion. Okay. 
Could be an amendment. I would like to amend my motion <laughs> to include my recommendation to change the stipend section from $100 per board meeting to 50 Well, why can't? If we're going to do that, there's two things I want to change. Okay, then why don't you propose those two clauses? No. Okay. This is just getting out of hand. Okay. Admin committee. Then I withdraw, just, withdraw my change. Let's just go to admin committee and talk in admin committee about the board policy. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Yes. I withdraw my change back to the original motion. <laughs> No further discussion. We'll vote on the motion. Director Moran? Yes. yes. Just send it back to the committee. President Henry? Yes. Director Poles? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Okay. Motion <laughs> All right. Um, item B, the uh, revised Fall Creek Fish Ladder. Yes, uh, this is uh, an item in regards to the Fall Creek Fish Ladder. I'm asking the board uh, uh, to review the contract with Waterways Consulting and approve for fish ladder improvements designed to meet uh, a 12-inch drop uh, in the fish ladder across uh, the chambers, approved by the California Fish and Wildlife. Uh, we've been working on the Fall Creek Fish Ladder for, for some time, located in, in uh, the Felton system. We have vertical drops that are currently approximately 18 to 24 inch, which is out of compliance. Uh, for some time now, we've been working with fishery agencies on updating the Fall Creek fish ladder, bringing it into compliance, and we've been working on, as required by the Cal, uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the, uh, uh, the National Marine Fisheries, uh, a six inch drop, uh, jump across the fish ladder. We requested a variance to change from the 6 inches to 12 inches. We received, uh, you have in your packet, we received uh, the variance from the uh, fishing, California Fishing Game and the National Marine Fisheries, a design variance. Um, we need to go back to our consultant who's in the design of the fish ladder, change the criteria back to a 12 inch jump, uh, and then we will submit for uh, permits for uh, rehab of the fish ladder, redesign the fish ladder to meet the 12 inch jumps. We're looking at, uh, we've been working on this project for several years to get permitting. There's been several issues. This should be the last optical, optical. and we were looking at hopefully meeting a uh, spring, summer of uh, 2020 on the uh, construction. So this is just, I'm asking you to approve uh, the uh, waterways contract to move ahead and, and finish the design for the building scale. And, and this will reduce our cost? It will probably, yeah, substantially reduce our cost. Okay. Because a 12 inch jump, it's just like stairs, required uh, like four extra chambers to, to get it down uh, for a, a six inch jump. So now we cut the jumps and basically we're modifying the existing jumps that we have. I think installing one jump and, and re- uh, realignment of the actual intake structure, the screen intakes. So this will be a considered, considered less project than we had, um, with considerable uh, reduction in, in cost. Okay. Any comment from the board? Bob? Um, the cost of, of this? I didn't see the Exhibit B. Uh, did um, I miss it? Uh, I apologize if I did. I, it should be. Um, I saw 15, five, so 15 like five in there. Yeah. Okay. It's not a, a large contract. Close to 16, I thought it would be in here, but yeah. it doesn't appear that it is. So this contract. And I apologize. Uh, well, Rick, if you saw it in here, yeah, I, I, did. Huh. Yeah, I thought I saw one too. Right. Just for this consultant, is near $16,000. Yeah, I didn't see the exhibit, which was referring to the cost. Yeah. Yeah, right here on which page? page 43. C on page 43, second paragraph, 15790. 
Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was referring, I was looking at the exhibit. Yeah, it refers to an exhibit for cost, which usually might have more no, I, um, I detail. Right. And I didn't see that. No, that's right. just, that, that's the only place it's shown. So the majority of work has already been done by waterways, so it, it's, a, it's the advantage of the district to go back to waterways for a modification. Yeah. Do you have more questions? Yeah. So, uh, thank you, Mills. Uh, not only is this um, going to be uh, cheaper than we thought it was going to be, but it uh, suits the fish's needs as well. That's so, good. the fish population is doing well below the fish ladder, and it's doing well above the fish ladder. Fall Creek is a special uh, place for uh, salmonoid uh, habitat, and uh, we're taking care of it, and I, I, uh, this was one of the first things that was on the Environmental Committee when I got on that committee, and I'm glad to see that it's coming to a place where actual construction is going to take place. So I definitely uh, support moving forward with this. We've been working on this since 2013. It's been a long process. <laughs> a long time. Uh, Lou, did you have anything on this? No, I Well. I'd like those little fishies to get where they, they I'd like to see them get back the way they were when I first moved here in 71. It mm -hmm. was so fabulous. So, any comments from the audience? Uh, Mark. Hi, Mark Lee again from Denmark. I have an environmental background as well, UC Davis. Um, my cons this looks like a great uh, step forward, finally. Uh, my concern is change of the engineering drawing, uh, any changes in the contract that are going through the process once we complete, do we have any estimate of what the costs are and where they're located in the Fall Creek uh, tri tributary? Does anyone have that at their fingertips? Where the changes are located? Any, no, any changes in the, that are in the engineering drawings or construction? Is there a process in the uh, contract that will allow for changes in the contract uh, that they find, for example, there are difficult areas that have extreme debris problems, that they need additional manpower. You this, know. Will, this will be just to the actual structure itself. Yes. And not in the stream bed upstream or downstream. So this is, ladder. this will be directly. This will be construction of the actual fish ladder itself. Okay. And yeah. this is for the design only. The design only. Okay. And then once that design is completed, it'll wind up at the engineering committee, too, and, and there'll be updates through the engineering committee. Well done. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, can I get anybody else in the audience? Uh, any motion on this? Act, we need to take some action here. So, I'll make a motion that we approve the recommendation and uh, go forward with uh, this contract. And mm -hmm. so. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, uh, just a, a point of clarification from Council for contracts, because the board policy manual requires the board president to sign, uh, where it's contemplated is here that the district manager should sign. Uh, part of the motion would be to authorize the district manager to sign the contract. I will amend my motion to include that language. Amended, sir. Okay. All right. You want to call the question? Director Moran? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Fulce? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Motion passes. All right, um, item C, scheduled rate increase. Yes, uh, 2017, the district conducted a rate study which resulted in the approved five-year rate increase. Uh, this occurs with a November billing of each year ending in fiscal year 2021-22. Uh, 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 the additional revenues produced are for needed infrastructure and capital improvement projects and increased in district reserve funds. In addition, uh, the restructuring led to more consumption-based water rates uh, versus fixed-based uh, uh, proration. The increase in fiscal year 2019-20 is 6%. Fiscal year 2021, this, uh, fiscal year 2021-22 will each have a 5% increase. 
Um, in August 2019, the district pledged net, net revenues to secure the $14,500,000 in funding for capital improvements, the market conditions, uh, and the healthier projected financial future of the district made this favorable financing possible. Additional information on the rate study, rate increase, and re recent debt financing can be found on the district's website. Um, with that, uh, I have no recommendation. Uh, this is for information only, uh, and I know other directors are just, uh, will have input here. I believe that was your item. It was indeed. Uh, what I'm proposing is that we freeze the volumetric rates for uh, fiscal year 1920. Uh, which would uh, leave them at 10.83 per unit uh, instead of going up to 11.48. Uh, according to the forecast that I have, that would result in about $247,000 um, uh, lower revenue for the forecast. Um, we saved about $150,000 on the budget that we went through with our um, uh, cost uh, analysis, and I have always stated publicly that the um, excess that we would achieve would be balanced between our unfunded liabilities, our infrastructure requirements, and great relief. And at this point, I'd like to make that suggestion. Uh, I would like to know how that affects our loan. Will it affect our loan? Well, just real quick, the uh, staff is not prepared tonight to look at finances and rate reductions, and possibly this would be something you'd want to send to the finance committee okay. for further review, and what this would do to district finances and our abilities to pay back our loans, etc. I mean, the finance manager, this is the first she's heard of that tonight. I'm not sure want to add anything to that. Yeah, I'd have to go run. So, I mean, I know when we did the budget process, we looked at the forecast without the rate increases, and it showed that that's not financially feasible. So this is kind of a hybrid of that, so I'd have to go look at that and then um, confer with council on what that means for the loan, because at that point it was um, forecasted with the rate increases and the net revenues were pledged. So my question is, um, we passed the budget based on the rate increase, right? So that also would, it might affect the loan, it might affect the budget. So if we kept, if we saved a hundred and some thousand, but we then cut two hundred thousand or a hundred thousand in the hole. Well, you'd have to find more cost reduction or deal with it as a, um, part of the PM. In this fiscal year? In this fiscal year. I would have concerns to find more reductions in this fiscal year that we've already found in the budget process. I mean, I, I would say you refer this to the Finance Committee where we can where we look at the numbers and have a chance. Because I'm, we're not sitting here tonight uh, being able to to recommend further cuts to the budget for this fiscal year. Yeah, will we have time to do that? The next meeting for finance is October? Probably not. We have to have a special meeting. Um, I'll leave it up to the board's decision on what they want to do on that. I'm happy to take it to, to the finance committee. We just need to do it faster than the next scheduled meeting. So um, I'll just interject one thing, one question I have is um, I know we've tried to increase our reserves as well and um, that's important to me and I wonder what effect this would have on our goal of building our reserves. So the question that Lois had about whether it affects the loan, the reserves, um, and whether budget. Uh, the budget. Those are the three questions that I had as well. Yeah. So our current, according to the last meeting, our current uh, coverage ratio is about 2.5. Right now? Yeah, right now. Something. And the covenant that we signed up for um, requires 1.25. Um, if we look on, and I went back and looked at the trust agreements that we, that we signed, there is a explicit 
paragraph in the agreement, I'll send this on, uh, that says that it contemplates that surpluses could be returned to the ratepayers. Um, and as far as I could tell, there's no specific obligation around rates. In fact, it does talk about mm -hmm. things that might change going forward. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and, and that I do, th and that yes, it would be, um, for the budget point of view, we would probably wind up reducing what went into reserves. Um, historically, I also took a look at our coverage ratio since 2009 for the last annual report. And we've met a 1.25 coverage ratio on four times out of the 10 years. So we're actually doing quite well now. Um, uh, we went from 1.33, which is barely over, to 2.3 last year. And we'll, I'm not sure what it'll be this year, but the budget says 2.5. So, but I, I, I think it would be great to go to the budget committee, and I just would want to make sure we do it in a time frame that and still get it back to the board in time to vote on it before the rate increase would go into effect. Yeah, wait, we're not done. Okay. Um, Lou, do you have anything to say? Yes, I do. Um, I would recommend that we follow the district manager's recommendation that we take no action on the rate increase for this year, partly because of the loan and the potential impact there but more largely because of the potential impact with infrastructure. I am very concerned. We have momentum now. I have a report to give you at the end of the, 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 uh, the board meeting regarding uh, moving forward on what I call the five pipe project, which is a major part of our infrastructure. And I do not want to have availability of funds as something that slows us down now that we have some positive momentum. Can I say something? Yes. Um, I think uh, this present board has made uh, great strides in reducing costs and changing the direction of funding and uh, the, sh the sharpness that people look at in budgets. And it's a slow move, but it's a move. And I appreciate that. And, you know, whether it's faster or stays on track with what we've already talked about, is maybe something that the finance committee has done. But I appreciate uh, what you, this board has done as far as reducing costs. I, I'm uh, with Lou. I don't think this is the time to do this. Um, I actually voted no on the rate increase, but anybody who was at that meeting would have heard me say, I know the district needs the rate increase. However, I had a mm, problem with trust of the previous manager, district manager. And that's why I voted no. Not because I didn't believe the district needed the money. And when I was running for the board, I never, ever promised anyone that we would cut rates. I would love to cut rates. You know, who wouldn't? But, you know, I, I come from Southern California. I got a cousin who's on a water board down there. Those people pay virtually nothing for their water. But there's hundreds of thousands of them. They have so many customers. Your customer base makes a difference about what you're going to pay. And I look at their bills and it's like, oh my gosh. And of course, I was on the Wampika Water Board. We had 500 customers. Can you? And we had two treatment plants. Um, we had wells and tanks and all and staff, and can you just imagine what that cost people in Long Pico cost a whole lot of money. And of course, SLV has a whole lot more people than Long Pico had, but it, it's kind of a, it, a part of it is 
is how many customers do you have to spread this out? And I really wish we could lower rates. I know there's people that hurt. Older people who can't pay the bills. And I wish there was some way to help them pay the bills. But I can't go for this uh, rate reduction right now. Bob? No, I don't think this will impact them in any at all. Um, like I said, I think that what we would probably see is a reduction of the money that goes to the reserve by some amount. Um, but the infrastructure is absolutely moving forward, and that's not any intention on my part to change that. Relative to infrastructure and relative to deferred maintenance and all the rest of it, and even deferred meter installations, that sort of thing, we have a very large unknown set of numbers out there that I know we're working on trying to get better numbers for. And once those numbers are in, along with the inventory for the infrastructure, which will tell us what shape our infrastructure is in and over what time period we need to replace things, we're going to have a very difficult conversation with our ratepayers because what that's going to mean, I think the numbers are going to come in and you know, we're all going to be you know, really surprised by how big those are going to be. And so in the meantime, I think our ratepayers, after having uh, approximately a 40% or so increase, need a little relief, especially those that are on fixed income, and about 30% of our population that lives on $50,000 or, or less a year. Um, and so, you know, this is sort of a shared sacrifice uh, situation. And I think it's incumbent upon us to do everything we can to support those people that struggle every month with paying this bill. I, I would like to make another comment here about reserves. I really believe in reserves. I worked for a credit union for 30 years. And I remember one time the federal examiner said to me, hey, you've got a lot of reserves. Why don't you give some of this money back to your members? And I said, we give them lower rates on loans, higher interest on their savings, IRAs, certificates. Uh, we do all of that, and I'm saving these reserves for a rainy day. A rainy day came in 2008. The, in the finances of this country went That credit <coughs> union survived and is still surviving today because there were plenty of reserves for a rainy day. And let me tell you, we're going to have rainy days here. We're going to have earthquakes. We're going to have droughts. And I sure hope we don't have a fire. We need, I, I, I can't just say, oh, we don't need as much in reserves. I don't believe that at all. I don't. We need more than enough, not just enough, or a little less than enough. Yes. And I agree with you. We need a lot more reserves than we have. And yeah. we're going to build those up over a period of time. Um, but we have built up those reserves and from where they had been um, after they got ran down quite a bit. And i got to tell you, the reserves that we're at even now, we're going to be adding more later, next year, year after, year after, over a multi-year period. We're not going to get there to where we need to be in one year. But in the meantime, we can help some of the people in this valley that are struggling. Uh, we, we uh, put the, blue, put, blue, blue, yeah. Go ahead. When staff put together the budget, we went through a budget process this year. We went through several committee meetings. Mm -hmm. We went through several board meetings. We had the rate increases <coughs> listed in the closed budgets. This board adopted that budget. I say we move ahead and we execute that budget that was adopted. We seem to be coming back several months after we just adopted a budget. Now we're going to do more cuts and, and lower the budget. I don't see any other where, any other where in that budget to where 
we can start making cuts, not unless we're going to be looking at staffing. And that's where I feel this is going. And I have real issues with that. You know, that's why we just put together this budget and now all of a sudden we want to reduce it. Well, why didn't we do this then and work through where we had the whole process going through the public, public meetings and now they come back. And I was under the impression this was just more informational to make people aware that the rate increase is coming. Um, we just canceled the budget and finance meeting that was supposed to be on September 3rd. So, I mean, if there were requests to wanting to look at numbers and run some different ideas, that would have been the appropriate meeting to kind of start some of this. I, was, I wasn't expecting the path we've gone down from this agenda. So, Lou, you want to say something? Yeah, I'd like to address what Bob said. He, he makes a very good point that uh, he's thinking of the rate payers. And I have frequently said that I consider myself to be uh, my top priority is rate payers. My second priority is division staff or district staff. And then it goes down from there. Um, so, you may wonder why am I supporting a rate increase? It's because I believe that the public is behind what we're doing with infrastructure. And, and I would like to hear from them when, when we open it up because I think that the, the two biggest inputs for this issue are district staff and the public. And I believe what I'm doing, and it, what's that saying? I mean, I may be paranoid, but that doesn't mean I'm not right. You know, I'm worried about infrastructure and I'm worried about momentum and I'm worried about getting this done because eventually there will be a natural disaster and we're going to pay dearly if we don't have a significant portion of our infrastructure fixed because it'll be a lot worse than it would have been if we if we don't do what we can do. So I, that's it. I'm okay, so I'm going to go to the, uh, with the baseball hat. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rebecca. I'm a homeowner in Ben Lumen. And um, I appreciate your regard for ratepayers. I really do. And I also um, think that I, I feel very concerned about infrastructure. I also feel very concerned about cuts to um, environmental programs. If we don't have environmental programs, we don't have water. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we don't live in Southern California. It's true, we live here for a reason. It's incredibly beautiful. I have children, I'm raising them here in the valley. I want them, their natural resources, the beauty of these mountains to be protected. I believe water is sacred and I don't think that um, I think paying for it is a way to give back and to protect the places that give us life, fundamentally life. So I'm not quite sure, Mr. Fultz, what your agenda is in pushing for a rate decrease or a not rate increase when it seems like the infrastructure, there is momentum, the people that my community cares dearly about environmental issues about how we protect our lands, about how we protect the water. It seems like there's an urgency with which you're trying to not have a rate increase and yet it's been what the budget is. There is a timing to everything. And so um, I feel a little bit scared about trying to like jam a not rate increase into a schedule and a budget that's already been planned out for the rest of the year. Um, but I think there's other ideas that are possible for people who are really struggling. If you guys have a, a program or something that has tiers, I don't know, maybe you do, that has tiers for people that they can apply. You have so many slots for people that they can apply if they don't have enough income. If they're struggling, they can prove they don't have enough income. Other people who do have enough income can um, commit to paying one more cent per unit to cover that. I, I think that would work here in the Valley. We all live together. We're all drinking out of the same stream. We, we recognize that. We, so there, I think there's other ideas and possibilities besides what you're proposing. Thank you. Elaine. Elaine, you want to say something? I do. I, I really question. I'm, I'm very confused about your proposal because you cut a lot of programs, especially in the environment, and I just say, oh, we have enough money. We don't need the rate increase. So which is it? We can, we can draw down the reserves. Now we can draw down the reserves, but before we had to cut all these programs? What is going on? Are you trying to starve the district? Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah, good saying? question. Okay. Uh, uh, Mark, did you have your hand? Yes. Hi, Mark. I've been watching this debate going on 
from both sides now, both the fiscal conservatives, the environment, and the infrastructure for what, 13 years now, several <laughs> elections? And there's a balance that we need to look for. It includes making sure that people in the low and moderate income groups have some ability to pay their monthly payment. I don't know if you've driven around like I have. There are a lot of homes for sale. You're having a out migration occurring right under your nose. It's too expensive to live here for many people. Sure, we have the new Silicon Valley, uh, you know, millionaires moving here and buying a property, but they're a small fraction of what the actual population is here. Most of us live on very fixed or moderate low incomes. There was a program that was proposed by the state of California where they were going to allow $600 million applied to each of the water districts through a grant program. And that was supposed to be applied to people that were making less than $30,000 a year of what the poverty rate is here. That program was never acted upon. The other issue is infrastructure. We can continue building our infrastructure, fixing tanks and extending, you know, fixing leaks, but it doesn't have to be at the gang, uh, gang fast uh, velocity that we're pursu pursuing. And no, I know that we're trying to catch up, but there is this, there is this perception that the loan is going away. It's not going away. We already have the money. It's, it's what, $14.5 million? We already have present value dollars here to take care of the current uh, you know, physical difficulties that we have, put money into reserves without actually increasing water rates. We aren't, we're not saying reduce water rates. We are suggesting, at least I am, that we stabilize water rates as uh, through what some of the uh, calculus that Bob is talking about in terms of the volumetric calculation. So I think everyone's frantic and uh, kind of grasping at, at uh, you know, theories and solutions, but it's very emotional. We need to send the budget back to the finance, go through the calculations, and find where we can make some savings and cuts. And I agree with the <coughs> proposal that uh, Director Bob Fultz is proposing. I hope the rest of you will vote for that. <coughs> we can find savings. We don't have to continue raising our rates 6% per year, a total of 67% over the next five years. We are getting more expensive than SoCal Water District, Scotts, uh, the city of Scotts Valley, and city of Santa Cruz. We are becoming the most expensive place to live. And who's going to be suffering? It's the middle class. Okay? You're cutting your own whatever. We need to send a message. We voted you in with a particular uh, message to bring to the public to reform our rates. That was what your, that was what your, one of your political campaigns. I don't care what Rick is, is committed to in terms of budget. I want to know what we can accomplish in the next five to ten years that is that's financially feasible with the highest priority, which we worked on in the capital facilities planning process. So I think we can do it. I just think we need to put our thinking caps on, take it back, do the calculus, work with the finance people. Thank you. Uh, I, I can't see whose paws are up, so Peter, I can see. I have a procedural question. Was Mr. Fultz's suggestion in the board packet? I didn't see it. It was an informational and item. There's a and I, if it's not, and I don't think it is, it's not proper for discussion tonight. Well, because it's... Because it's got it, to be public notice that this is going to be discussed. It, it is on the agenda to be discussed. Under reading. No, it, it just says a rate increase. It doesn't say... Discussion the, by the board regarding the scheduled rate right. increase. Right, but there's nothing in there about what he suggested. As, as, as Rick Rogers pointed out, he thought, and he's the, you know, he works here. He thought it was an informational item. Okay? Well, you have to notify I, the public this is going to be up. You, can't, you, you cannot discuss this any further, in my humble opinion. Okay. Well, uh, Gina, is he right? There was right? no public notice of it's this. It's not illegal. It's it is discussion. illegal. It's, There's a no, it's a discussion. No, it's a discussion. There was no public notice that this was going to be discussed tonight. It's right not on the agenda. Can I ask specifically? No, it's not. Can, can we ask Gina? Yes, Lois just did, but she hasn't answered. Gina? Carol, yeah. Um, I believe the discussion is within the scope of the agenda item, but the specific action that was sort of 
there is no specific action that could be taken tonight that would effectuate um, what Director Fultz proposed. Yeah. If, if that is the result of the discussion of the board desire to go in that direction, it would have to come back with a specific right. agenda right. item. Right. Um, Thank you. Yes. Hi, I'm Joni Martin. I live in Felton, and um, Bob seems to be a perfectly sane person. The proposal <laughs> sounds insane to me from a management standpoint. You've got a budget. You were just talking, the district manager was just talking about having a favorable loan rate based on the numbers that you gave them. And now all of a sudden, right before the rate increase, you're suggesting a complete change to what all of this was based on. And that just seems utterly senseless. I think that it's great that you're thinking about rate payers, but bring that suggestion up a year from now when it comes around again. Not right now when the increase is just gonna, it's about to happen. And the district has done their work. Like It just seems like a huge waste of staff time to ask them to go back and you know, try to renegotiate a loan or something. It just doesn't sound like a smart way to run things. Thank you. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, my name's Ron Campbell from Felton. I'm a local contractor <coughs> that's lifted over 900 houses since the earthquake. I know a little bit about the infrastructure. There's band-aids on top of band-aids on top of band-aids. I know pipes that go under people's houses, <laughs> two-inch pipes. Right. It's a wreck. If you have five good lines that need to be put, they're not getting any cheaper next year or the next year or the next year. If we have the money now, nobody wants to pay more money for water. Nobody wants to pay more money for anything. But the longer we wait, the more expensive it's going to become and the more the system will decay. Thank you. from Felton and I appreciate the service that our water district gives us and I appreciate the attempts to keep the costs down however I don't think the water district is a charity organization if we aren't allowed to have tiered rates which I understand is the new law right yeah right then we need to have some organization either part of the water district or separate from the water district for us to help our neighbors pay their water bills. It's not the water bills that are making it expensive here. Mm -hmm. It's the food, it's gas, it's everything else. Yes. You know, we, our, our expenses are increasing with pg e with everything. So why make it the water district's problem that people can't afford their rates? We can't afford to not have water. We can't afford to not have infrastructure that can withstand drought and we really need to get on top of what's happening with the Santa Margarita aquifer and also the Ben Loman uh, side of our watershed here we need to protect our watershed first before we start giving money back I think the budget was well thought out it sounds like there was an awful lot of planning that went into that I trust our director here um, Rick and that's all I have to say. Zach, uh, Virgil, I guess, aren't you? Yeah, hi, Virgil. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed because a lot of people don't have the history of what's been going on here for about the last year. I was at every budget meeting. I was at every board meeting that discussed the budget, and it was pretty ugly at times because there is a culture of raising rates don't cut anything. Your budget resolution lies in raising the rates. That culture is what got us here. Now when you try, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's terrible when you try to correct that. The, your um, suggestions that, that, you know, about, uh, you know, the various um, uh, programs and get valley churches involved and all that, that has been discussed multiple times and it all comes up with a big no, mostly because of legitimate concerns by staff. Um, if you are, the, and we're not talking about construction and, and infrastructure issues here. 
That's wrong. That's a red herring. Yes. We've got $14.5 million being held by the, uh, by the county for the next three years for us to accelerate an incredible lack of foresight that's happened over 20 years. Yes. We have committed the rest of the ratepayers to pay back that $14.5 million for the next 30 years because it was very advantageous to do it right now and, and get us out of this hole. The hole was, is real. The solution is real. Don't conflate the two. And the problem is, if you are not going to discuss affordability, you can't discuss rate increases. It's a part of the California Water Code. Thank you. Robin Brun from Felton. I'm actually here on another budget matter, on another agenda matter, but I did hear Mr. Rogers say that this was already approved in the budget that was already discussed. So what I'm concerned is that I've been here for a lengthy process on this agenda item, but I'm actually waiting to speak on another one. And my concern is that if every time you want to take action on something that's already approved in your budget, there's a huge discussion whether you're going to actually change the budget, I think you're going to end up in a, you know, a whirlpool going nowhere. And I think there ought to be a criteria that you have to meet before you can uh, change the budget. Might be, uh, you know, uh, substantial change in circumstances that were unanticipated at the time the budget was made something of that nature and that you have to meet that threshold before you use every single meeting and every single budget item as an opportunity to refight the budget if you lost it at the budget fight because I'm sure you had these fights when the budget was made and whatever happened you ended up with a budget so let's stick with it unless there's something unusual and unanticipated. Yeah. More or less what she said, but, but <laughs> yeah, you know, to bring this up at this stage, I think is irresponsible and disrespectful of the staff. They've gone through this process, they've done the cuts, mm -hmm. they've put the budget together, and now a month before these things want to, these rate increases want to want to happen, you want to bring up suspending them. Why didn't you bring this up last month or the month before, Bob? Uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me at all to bring this up at this last minute unless you're just trying to do an end run around something. And, and, and I just think it's disrespectful of, of, of what's gone in to this process and the budget that, that you already have that, that relies on, on this rate increase. The, the time to address not doing this rate increase is not now. It's not a month before these things are going to go into effect. It was a month, two, three, four months ago. Uh, Um, we need to get moving on here, uh, and, and uh, because we've got other things to do, so I, I'm sorry, you get to talk once, uh, and we have to move on. So, yeah, well, I'm not going to let him talk again either. <laughs> um, so, uh, so what's the disposition of this one? The disposition is we discussed it. That's all we get to do. So we're going to refer it to the budget committee? You can't do anything with it. Why not on the agenda? No, not going to refer it to the budget committee. Okay. Can't take it. Then I will put it, then I will ask it to be put on the next meeting's agenda as an action item for us to take action, unless, Rick, you don't want that to happen. I don't want it to happen. I understand. <laughs> but we also have somebody that's missing, so Steve Swan, right? And he may have his own foot on it as well. He might, but... But, if, Rick, if it's not something that you want to do, then I, then I won't. It's not something I want to do. Okay. Okay, we're moving on. Okay. Um, we're going to go to item D, which is board member committee assignments. Um, we we have um, we need to make some changes to board committee assignments. 
Um, we have a new director. Um, did I even tell the people that you were here tonight? They know. Anyway, so um, we need um, somebody. Let's see. We have Lou on environmental, and it would seem that you ought to be on environmental too because that's your strength. Is that okay with you? Yes, fine with you. Okay. So we also have um, Director Foltz. Well, we can only have two board members, and I, my understanding is that he. I won. will absolutely defer to to Red. Yeah. Okay. Um. So then we have the engineering committee, uh, which is Steve Swan and uh, Lou Ferris. And Steve Swan is asked to come off of that, so I was thinking perhaps you would be on the engineering committee. Can you do that? Yes, I can. When uh, I was actually the environmental committee, when I first came on it, was the environmental engineering committee. So right. uh, I'm prepared to... Who knows, it may become one again. Who knows? Um, and... Okay, I, I don't think there's going to be changes to the admin and finance unless Bob wants a change. No, good. Okay. Um, which means Bob and I are admin and finance. Uh, then there's Santa Margarita. Um, so we want to make change there. Uh, I'm on Santa Margarita, and Steve Swan's on Santa Margarita. He wants to be off of Santa. His, his job has just taken so much of his time, he can't do this. Um, so I want to put Lou on Santa Margarita as the second member. It would be you and me, Lou. And then as an alternate, Rick Moran. Will that work? Sure. Okay. So my understanding of that is uh, I can go, <laughs> but I can't speak. Yes. Right. Okay. You can go, and it's a good idea to go. I encourage you. So you know what's Thanks. going on, but yeah, you can't say a word. Well, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Unless so. one of the other is not there, then he can speak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If, yeah. One of us. But, you know, Lou and I show up to everything, right? <laughs> so you might not ever get to exercise your lips. Uh, so, anyway, is are these changes agreeable to everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. To the board. Okay. All right. So, well, we took care of that. And the public, 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 public. Uh, What? I I didn't see a paw. Oh, Chuck. Hey, Paul. Um, <laughs> I think Lou will be great on the Santa Margarita. I, uh, I think that's a really good decision. The others are, are reasonable decisions as well. So, um, I'm reasonable? I didn't say that. <laughs> that wasn't a change. <laughs> okay. All right. So. The committees have been, are we, do we have to vote on that? Or just, uh, we're in agreement? You get to appoint. Yeah, yeah but I, I can appoint and somebody can say, forget it. Yeah. Everyone agreed. Yeah. Okay. Gina, you need a motion on that, do you? Just let Lois's appointment on committees? Gina? Yes. Yeah. 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 Hello. Can we lose her? Gina, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. can you hear me? Do, we don't need a motion on committee appointments, do we? Yes, this should be confirmed with a motion okay. of the board. Okay. All right. Anybody want to make a motion? I will make a motion that um, <laughs> Director Moran join me on the engineering committee as well as the environmental committee that I take responsibility for the second seat for the Spink one, and then Director Moran be the alternate for Spink one. 
I'll second that. <laughs> you want to call the question? Director Moran? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Pulse? Yes. Director Ferris? Yes. Yes. Okay, moving right along here. Uh, new business, item A, draft strategic plan from Director Fultz. Discussion and possible action by the board. So again, I think we might be able to um, accelerate some of the conversation because this is the same situation as the last one. It's not clear the process by which agenda items get in here, but um, I want to uh, Re re um, recall the board meeting in March 21st where we discussed the strategic plan and at which point um, I volunteered to bring back a draft to the board for disposition um, and that that uh, seemed acceptable to a majority of the board members at that time uh, the alternative that was proposed was that the board spend 10000 perhaps more, on uh, a consultant. And given that this is a document that I think needs to be owned by the board, um, it didn't seem to be a good use of money to do that. Um, I had several goals in writing this uh, to achieve greater focus, to simplify, to shorten, uh, to put more emphasis on policy, to make it an easier read, and to make it board ownership. The current draft is, which I don't believe was ever passed uh, in 2016, is about 50 pages, and what I'm proposing is about uh, 13 or 14 pages. Um, the process that I went through was to make sure that we were covering the topics that were in here, to the extent that we um, uh, wanted to do that. Um, to add to that topics that we had discussed during the campaign, uh, promises that we had made that we were going to do. Um, move more into strategic rather than tactical. Add to it policies that we had already enacted as a board as we were moving through the process the first eight months, and then other topics that I think we had learned about during our time on the job. Um, so in that regard, I don't think the content of this will be surprising. Uh, the format is definitely different. The manner in which the information was put together is different. Uh, it did not have the progress bars that should be in a separate uh, document, in my opinion. Um, my expectation for this is that the board was going to decide to do something, uh, and that would range everywhere from we don't want it, we want to go back to a consultant, um, to we refer it to a committee, uh, or we decide we're going to have a different approach through an ad hoc committee of the board or something like that. Uh, but it was not my expectation that this would be voted on uh, necessarily tonight. Um, if that happened, great, but that wasn't the expectation. Um, so that's kind of a summary of what, uh, of the approach I took, the objectives we were trying to reach, and, and how we got to this point based on the March 21st meeting. Happy to answer any questions. I, um, I must have been unconscious the night that you would say we decided we're going to uh, have you write this? Because I don't, I don't think it's a board member's job to write policy. I think it's the board's job to uh, decide on policy and have workshops. And I thought we were going to have workshops. And I, I guess, um, I guess maybe I wasn't paying attention. Um, and there are several things. The, the difference is. Uh, okay, a consultant did the, the, the um, strategic plan before, and one of the first things he says, and I think it's on 78, 
page 78. He said, this strategic plan is a collaboration effort involving many individuals, directors, public, staff, and consultants. And I feel like you gave us a draft, you changed the mission statement, which I really don't like. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you use the phrase ruthlessly efficient, and I'm for being efficient, but if you look up what ruthless means, it's a very ugly word, has, in my mind, no place in the strategic plan. The other thing is, um, I want to go back to our board policy manual on page 26 of the agenda packet says, during the first regular meeting after January 1st of each year, of course we missed that, each committee shall review the district's current strategic plan. Now, whether it was voted on or not, I have no idea, but there is a plan, and identify strategic plan elements pertaining to said committee. The committee's findings regarding each strategic plan review shall be reported back to the board at the next available regular board meeting for discussion and to allow the board to provide direction back to the committees regarding completion of identified strategic plan elements. That's part of our board policy. That never happened. Um, nobody was involved in, in, in the draft. I understand it's a draft, but no one was involved in that. Um, I, I have a problem with it. I'm sorry. Well, it's, it's the same thing, Lois, as the previous thing, which is yep. I volunteered to do something. It is entirely up to the board as to what you want to do with it in terms of the content or the process or what have you. Any board member on this board is free to bring anything to the board that they wish to have discussed. That is, in my opinion, a core cultural thing that this board should have. And if the reaction to that, especially when the board member submitting, in this case me, is saying, hey, it's a draft, let's either dispose of it, say we don't want it, we want to go back and do something else. I'm not going to hurt my feelings either way, but to basically say that somehow this is being done incorrectly, that's just not right. A board member has, a board member has the ability to bring whatever the board member wants quiet. to the board. That's true. Okay. So, But also, you absolutely, well, in writing your draft, didn't go along we, with board we, policy. We can, we can do anything we want as a board. Okay. That policy, as far as I know, and I've served in a committee for three years, has never been followed. Right? So, with respect to wait. the process, Andy. With respect to the process. And so, I, I, I get, I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm actually flabbergasted a little bit. It's sort of like, the discussion that we had was, this is okay to do. I gave heads up. It's sort of like, no good good deed goes unpunished here? Is that what we're I trying to do? I told you <clears throat> two times recently that I didn't like the idea of one board member doing this. I am not doing this. This is something brought okay. to the board for discussion, Lois. Okay. That is the and process I'm by which it with you. that is the process <laughs> by which we do things. But the discussion isn't, gee, uh, uh, this is something that we should discuss in at a policy level bereft of the personalities. It's well, you shouldn't have done this. Well, as a board member, I can absolutely do this. And you did it. There you go. Okay. And I have in my say. Okay. Um, you want to say anything? I need a way for us to be able to discuss these issues. 
uh, like the strategic plan, okay? So if this is a way for us to do that, outside of committees, because I can't necessarily be involved in the administration committee, so if it's a way to feel out the board on how it feels about making changes to the strategic plan, then I see this is uh, a legitimate way of doing that. And that's how, what I feel like I'm going to do here, is make some suggestions to what I think is going on here. Um, and then it can, the committee can take it and having recognized uh, some of the interests that various board members had and try to craft something, all right? I appreciate Director Fultz's uh, willingness to take on something that we have previously paid a lot of money for. Um, and um, I, I just stop there. I appreciate that. Okay. And I, I, I'd like to be able to, to discuss these issues without it uh, necessarily, I don't think he, uh, Bob expects it to be finalized in any way. No. All right? Okay. okay. Lou, did you have anything you want to say? I do. But first I would ask that you bear with me. This may take a few minutes. First point I'd like to make is that I believe this should go back to the admin committee for review. Having said that, um, I would like to point out something that I did a couple of months ago, and that is I took it upon myself in talking with, with Larry Ford and both of us expressing our opinion about the urgency of fire prevention planning to take it to Rick and, and start having meetings together, even though the person who should have been there was on a month's vacation, um, and, and push that point, thanks to Larry, um, to, to the point where we were ready to make a recommendation to the board to do something in the height of the fire season. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, but I have to acknowledge that I feel like I was, I was, I'm rationalizing um, something that I probably exceeded my authority in doing and, and pushing that um, beyond, I mean, taking it so quickly and, and taking it out of the hands of the board and out of, out of the committee hands and just, just running with the ball. I felt it was justified, but, but I acknowledge that I, I walked a pretty thin line in doing that. Um, and if, if something were to come back at me based on that, then, then I deserve it. Uh, having said that, I, I view what Bob did in a similar light. Um, we, we decided months ago not to proceed the way we had done in the past with the same consultant for Bur our lives um, to simply update the strategic plan for the third time. And I, I, I'm glad that we did that, but I am just appalled at what we have as a result of that consulting fee. I mean, 47 pages of strategic plan. I have never in my life, and I've audited 500 companies and looked at 500 strategic plans and never seen one over seven pages. Uh, it's, it's, it's an abomination. It's, you know, he, it's a confusing morass of elements, board objectives, accomplishments, strategic goals, progress charts, status items, control programs, all spanning nine categories. And it confuses strategic plan with objectives, with accomplishments, with everything. It's just, it's an unworkable document and needs to change. So I actually give him, you know, kudos for taking it and running with the ball. And I, I have read the, what he has done. I applaud the fact that he's reduced it from 47 pages to a more workable 13 pages. I think it should be even uh, shorter, but that's just my experience with, with strategic planning. Uh, but I think we need to get that done. We need to get it done quickly so it can guide us in the future. Um, but having said that, I, I think that we, we kind of, uh, he probably did the same thing I did. You know, in, in his zeal, he rationalized what he was doing. I'm not, I don't speak for you, but um, I, I applaud the effort, and I think it is a good start to what I hopeful, will hopefully will be a, a, a viable and dynamic strategic plan that we can use to guide ourselves in the future. Uh, but I don't want to just, you know, um, stop the progress that he has made. One last point is I, I really am disappointed to see the amount of social media blasts, you know, directed at, at how we did it. You know, I understand it, and, and I agree with the, with the fact that it was, that it was taken out of, out of committee, but... And we need to help him to create 
a workable strategic plan. So instead of just sending out um, social media blasts, talk to him. That's what I, I do, you know, and, and you know, talk to me if you don't want to talk to him. I don't care, but I still, I think this, it is important to advance the strategic plan as it is to advance our infrastructure. That's my opinion. Okay. Um, are we done as board talking here? Yes, for now. Okay. So, Elaine? Um, I, I just want to reply to one thing you said. Sure. How can we talk to him if we have no idea it's being done? I do not know until this was set up and I thought we were voting on it. Can I say something? Yeah, as it, long as yeah, you, you did know, but when you did know, you or at least a lot, some of you in the audience, <laughs> use social media instead of going to the source, and I don't understand that. If if the objective is to make a good product, you know, trying to to, to create emotional upswell is not the solution. The solution is to change this to something that does work. That's that's my only. Yeah, objective. I guess my assumption was that. This would have been addressed in the committees. And it should have been, I, I, in my and opinion. And so, I think we were bypassed. Yes. I agree. Um, a virgin? Yeah, hi. I'm, I am, I'm a strategic planning consultant. I've <laughs> 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 also worked with cities to do community planning. So I have a lot of experience in doing this kind of planning. And maybe that plan that you referenced before wasn't, I don't know, I didn't, I read through it, didn't get into details, but one of the reasons that planning in public is longer and more, uh, there's more to it, is because you have to hear from the public. And so that process of listening to the public is time intensive and it adds pages to the document. I, I, I agree that strategic planning has shifted over the past 20 years so that it's much more, um, you know, it's shorter now. It's just, that's the way it's gone. However, I would be happy to meet with Bob and talk to you about strategic planning and how public agencies do strategic planning because I really believe in it. I know that it works. I have seen this transform communities. And when it's done right and when you're talking to one another, and that's what, you know, and I agree we have to talk to one another, that you can reduce some of the conflict. And it's a mechanism for doing that. So we don't need to be in our camps we can actually work together and come up with something. But it's um, disconcerting for someone who lives in Felton as a customer of the Water District, but also does this as a profession, to see one person just change the mission. It's, um, it's disconcerting. It's a little scary, like, oh my god, what is one person on the board doing? So that's maybe some of the reaction that came up from that. Um. Um. Bob, I appreciate what you did here in, in trying to um, jumpstart the process. I think because I know we talked about this in the admin committee a couple of months ago. I know you were there, Lou. Um, I, I think the best step would have been to take this draft and bring it back to the admin committee. Again, I'll get back to the point that out of seven <coughs> meetings, we had three canceled, including this one that was just a, should have been yesterday, and we could have easily discussed your draft in the admin committee uh, a couple days ago, yesterday, and, um, you know, we could have avoided this. Uh, I was under the impression, as a member of the admin committee, that from, from that discussion we had a couple of months ago, that we would be going through this. And, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that this just showed up on the agenda tonight, and, and, and it just wasn't brought back to the committee automatically. It's frustrating. I don't feel like there's really any purpose for the admin community at this point because everything just seems to be coming to the board. Yes, sir. Um, I'm a present student at San Jose Valley High School, and when I saw that the current proposal for the stretch to your plan said they'll take out the wording of preserving the watershed, yeah. that concerns me <laughs> extremely deeply mm -hmm. since. I will have to live in this watershed for my entire life. So when you take that apart, it makes me feel like it will not be protected. And when it's not protected, then that's where our water comes from. And I 
don't know about the rest of you, but I like clean drinking water. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you do for future generations. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think that the raft should be planted at least. I would say that we need to preserve it for future generations because in 10, 20 years, like it may not be your problem, but it will be definitely my problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I personally want a safe watershed that will help the ecosystem and among all the other problems that we are having with the watershed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Chris. Chris Finney, Boulder Creek. Um, I don't know um, whether or not the board has followed the policy manual in the past. Um, but I do know that you recently rewrote it because I was here when you discussed it and when you passed it. So it seems like if you're going to rewrite it, you should follow it. So that's that comment. Um, I'm going to follow the lead of this lady back here um, in volunteering my professional services. I charge people a lot of money over in the Silicon Valley to do editing and proofreading and stuff like that. Um, I think that it's important because there have been court cases that were decided on the basis of a comma. And um, I have noticed when we were going over the policy manual that there was a lack of rigor, shall we say, in some of the wording. So um, I'm going to volunteer to um, to help you with that if you would like, and with this with this document as well. Um, then after that, I'd like to address a couple of um, actual substantive uh, pieces in here. There's a um, on page 67. There's uh, a suggestion to work with state and federal legislators for reg regulatory relief. Um, you may be able to work on that through an organization like the AWACA, but I have to tell you that working as a, as a small district independently, um, having, having been a longtime political activist, making those sorts of changes takes years. Um, and it takes a lot of dedication. I don't think we have the staff to do that, so it would be up to the board members to do it, or you would have to have some sort of grassroots support, or you'd have to be, get very involved with some organization like the AWACA um, to get them to do it. It's very lengthy, it's not inexpensive. So I think that that, that is not a bad goal, but it's a little unrealistic without being willing to devote, to vote, devote some resources to it. Um, Excuse me, where are you on 67? I don't uh, Down near the bottom, it's... Um, <coughs> the regulatory? The, uh, there's a, yes. There's a, there's a small paragraph at the bottom of the page, and then it's right above that. Is it 67 Four or five others? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's It's the left-hand side, 67. Right. So there's several numbers on it. Uh, 67 is the running. Uh, the, that's the entire document. The running. Right. 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 Um, no, I, on, I see where you're talking. On page 68, uh, under goals number six, it talks about direct pay. Um, as a rate payer, I would have some. Um, uh, I can't tell you how many organizations that I do business with have been hacked already in my lifetime. I would be very concerned about direct pay and security for a small board like this, mm -hmm. so I would want to know more about that. Um, underneath that, it says supplemental funding. I have the same question about that. Do we have staffing available to look for this outside funding? Other than that, it sounds like magical thinking to me if, if we don't and if we haven't dedicated some resources to finding that funding. And then finally, on page 68, um, you have talked about wanting to save money. That's fine. I understand that. Um, but you're talking about doing an inventory, a district inventory, that was already done by the previous board, so that seems wasteful. Uh, on number seven, 
you're talking about um, a catch-up program, increase the debt and ensuring a conservative debt coverage ratio is determined by district revenues. Um, that was a little confusing to me. I didn't understand how you were balancing all of those things. Um, and as the gentleman behind me already said, took the words right out of my mouth, um, things get more expensive if you wait on them. So, you know, I think I agree with Director Ferris that that kind of time is of the essence. Um, and then number nine, complete Lumpico projects as soon as possible. So why are we talking about possibly delaying some projects and then accelerating Lumpico projects? You know, living not in Lumpico, what am I, chopped liver? Well, yeah. we're paying for 10 years to get things done. Yeah. And nothing was done for the first three years. Um, I don't believe that that's true because for the first two years, Lompico wasn't using their own water, so there was stuff done. We were paying for our own water. Yeah, but you weren't using your own water because there needed to be repairs to the Lompico district. <coughs> and that was done over two years. Um, I'm not going to talk to you about that because you don't know what you're talking about. Pardon me. Uh, <coughs> but. Uh, Thanks very much, because I actually did talk to the former district manager about this, and I think I do know something about it. The Chris, former district manager of here? Yes. <laughs> okay, good again. I was on that board the whole time all this was going on, and Rick Rogers, Rick Rogers and I know more about this, and maybe Ed right there, than anybody in this room. So. Oh, I'm sorry, James. Off I'm, topic. You, you were off topic. Big help. <laughs> off topic. And anyway, <laughs> anyway, it's okay. Um, all right. Yes. You. I, I keep forgetting your name. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara Springer. Hi. Um, uh, oh, Springer. <laughs> Just to get us back on topic a bit, I really believe that Bob meant well in what he was doing and was trying to find the correct process for re for reviewing the strategic plan. And perhaps, it, it just it, to clarify that a little bit, I believe the correct process would have been to bring to the board just the statement, I would like to review the strategic plan can we, do others care? These are the reasons and some of the items I'd like to consider. And what is the process we want to use to review the strategic plan? Instead, you know, as the, as the public, we, we see this, what appears to be a finished document that is only to be reviewed. And I've done that sometimes. You hand people a finished document, that becomes what everybody's working from. Okay, that's not what should be done here. What should be done here is a complete process. That is an expensive process. That's why a consultant was brought in. But it needs to have all of the stakeholders at the table to do something that significant. I personally was horrified with some of what I saw in this. I, I saw a lack of concern for environmental issues and a, a focus on there being only one measure of success. That is true in a business climate. As you and I have discussed before when we were on the school board together, a public agency has different requirements. A public agency is responsible not just for one measurement of the bottom line, but for responsibility of openness, inclusion, in this case environmental protection, and protecting this watershed for, the, for future generations. So let's, let's talk about if we want to review the strategic plan, what is the process that should be used to do it? Yeah. Yeah. Peter? Thank you. I get Peter Gelboom, Boulder Creek again. Didn't want to cut off Barbara's applause. There wasn't any. I have a short letter that a number of people have signed that I'm going to read into the record here. Um, this draft revision, um, as we all know, was created by one board member without public involvement and recommends radical changes to the district's vision and operations. 
For example, the current mission is to, quote, provide customers and future generations reliable, safe, high water quality at an equitable price, close quote. The new draft version would drop future generations from the mission and replace equitable price with, quote, lowest possible sustainable price, close quote. The current mission is to, quote, manage and protect the environmental health of the aquifers and watershed, close quote. The new draft version would drop the obligation to manage and protect the environmental health of the watershed and instead only protect the land and aquifer upon which the district's water sources depend and facilities reside. This change could have dramatic implications for ownership of lands by the district and loss of control over the conservation of those lands. We strongly believe that any revision to the district's mission should occur only after ample opportunity for public input and review. This is particularly the case when the board is considering a profound departure from the district's historic mission to manage and protect our watershed for future generations. We therefore urge the board to table the draft proposal and not consider it at the board level until it has solicited public comments. <coughs> Specifically, we recommend the following, and I'm going to read the names of the people who signed this at the end. One, clearly identify any proposed changes and provide reasons the board is considering those changes. Two, hold public meetings for discussion regarding the mission and strategic plan. Three, Survey the water district customers asking for public comment on their highest priorities for the district. Four, promote through mailings, social media, and the website that the district is soliciting public comments for shaping the district's mission and strategic plan. In addition, the current plan guides the agency through 2021. That plan included the skills of an experienced outside consultant and involvement from the public, staff, board committees, and the full board of directors. We would like to know why the board feels that a significant revision is needed at this time, why it is not following established planning processes, and what changes, what specific changes to district operations or management of watershed lands and facilities are anticipated and would be allowed by this new mission statement. This was signed by the following district customers in alphabetical order. Chuck Bauman, Elva Bolin, Cynthia Zenzel, Jerry and Sheila Delaney, Peter Gelblum, Jenny Gomez, Alexis Crostu, Nancy Macy, Roberta McPherson, Jim Mosher, Debbie Rice, Barbara Springer, Lee Summers, Leah Watson, and Donna Zeal. That's the end of the letter. I have just a couple of things of my own that are not part of the letter. Bob mentioned the campaign promises. I'll send it to you. Thank you. This is all my book. Um, I think, in fact, this, this, if this were to come into place, it would be a betrayal of the electorate. The three people who were elected in the last election, very specifically, repeatedly, and against objection, said, we are environmentalists. We are going to protect the environment. Don't worry. Don't listen to those other guys who I worked with, who said, they're the environmentalists. These guys are not. These guys kept saying, yes, we are. Rick, who I'm very impressed with tonight, by the way, Rick, um, got onto the board primarily, almost exclusively, because of his work with the Environmental Committee and his concern for the environment. And I would hope that you, in particular, Rick, would object to this playing down of the environmental obligations of this board. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Virgil? Michael? Yeah. 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 Um, I disagree with a, almost everything he said, um, <laughs> mostly because it's argument by distraction, okay? That's not a legitimate form of discourse. If you look at what Bob has presented, it, he has consistently said it's simply a draft. A draft starts with one person. He's asked for you to toss it out. Let's see what happens if we do. But more importantly, he was trying. His mission statement is a better mission statement than the old mission statement, in my opinion. And thank you for letting me talk. Please don't interfere. Sorry. One of okay. I'm a humble tutor for English as a second language. Um, I understand English pretty well. I understand the nuance. What Bob did here was remove the nuance so that it was unambiguous 
it still kept in the environmental thing. You'll notice here, um, you'll notice that he, he gives you a single statement, okay, for the mission. He distilled most of the introduction to the California Water Code into a single sentence. I know no, nobody's here read the Water Code. It's real thrilling. But the, um, the important point is, I think, that he, he supplemented that statement with several bullet points that were headed by must. Not should, not maybe, but must. And the environmental concern is clearly marked there for anybody that understands English or is prepared to help me understand let them understand English. Thank you. Please send this back to admin. Um, you have one person here today who's spoken about this. I, there are other two other uh, public members on that committee. I know one has thought a lot about strategic planning, and the other is an eager learner in this process. You have two public members here tonight who have offered to help with this process. Have it go back there. This is the start of doing this the right way. The draft exists. It can't be, you know, a bell can't be unrung. So that Bob's opinions on this are here tonight. Um, but, but the starting point shouldn't be one director's opinion in this. It should be an amalgamation of the of the board, the committee, the public to somehow come together on something that the community agrees on. And that's the place to start is in the admin committee. Um, I'm Robin Brown from Dalton. I just want to thank you, uh, Chairperson Henry, because you started this discussion saying you didn't like the proposed mission statement. And I'm here because I like the one we currently have, just the way it is. I think that's what you said at the beginning of this discussion item. I think this is a huge change. I, I don't want to quibble about your process. I'm sure Mr. Fultz, you know, had the best of intentions and thought he was being helpful, but I don't know if he was aware of what a red button item it is to change a mission statement, and it's a very important thing to me, that's why I'm here, and why I think there was a, a, a flash point on the social media, because a lot of people were concerned about the proposed changes and felt like it was going to be sort of a rubber stamp approval of this, you know, mm -hmm. Submission. That's what our concern were, and that's why we're here, or I am anyway. So I think it's a fundamental change in philosophy, the proposed changes to the mission statement. I just want to point out three points, but I do want to, I'm going to give my four points, but I also want to emphasize if you have any intention of changing that mission statement, you need to have extensive public hearings on it, like um, Mr. Galbloom recommended, because people really care about that mission statement. Um, so one, you move from lowest price to equitable price. I think that's a significant change in values. Um, equitable sounds fair to me. Lowest is not the same as fair. Removal of the watershed, we're all concerned about that. Why? We're afraid of what that means. We're concerned about our watershed. I recently <coughs> wrote to the board about the fish monitoring, asking for us to support that. I quoted that whole section of the mission statement. I actually was concerned this was an end run around that issue because of, you know, you're going to change the mission statement mm -hmm. so you don't have to be so concerned about fish monitoring. You know, I, I, I you know, went that way and I think that without the public hearing so we have some clarity you can have people run in the wrong direction if that's the wrong direction that you weren't intending that but that's how I was concerned about it. Failure to define sustainable. You want lowest price sustainable. Who's the sustainable to? The fish? The budget? The customer? All of the above? That needs to be spelled out who, who you're being sustainable to um, because I want it to be all of the above. Um, and, and how the whole thing is written where the other concerns are secondary, there's certainly a hierarchy with the highest value placed on the lowest um, money. And um, that is not, that's a fundamental change in philosophy. The original and mission statement we currently have seeks to find balance. And I recognize <coughs> that balance is hard to find. It's a tough job for you to do, but I wouldn't tie your hands to the lowest price. Um, because uh, there's a lot more considerations than lowest prices. The person who spoke about public trust. 
Thank you very much. Any other comments out there? No? Okay. I'm back to the board. So, going to committee? Well, if that's the um, if that's the pleasure of the board, I mean that that's uh, that's fine. You know, again, um, the, the whole process by which um, these things happen is not particularly clear in our board policy manual. I forget who made the comment about the board policy manual being a little bit lack of rigor. There's no question about it. Um, that is something, by the way, that the admin committee tried to work on for two years and. Uh, unfortunately, was not able to reach a conclusion. I was only one member on that board, Ms. Fain. Uh, there were two board members, and for some reason, that document never really changed um, a whole lot. And I think it's because these kinds of documents, um, it, without a starting point, it's very difficult to... Um, move through that in a process that, that's going to reach a conclusion. Let's be very clear. This document was never approved. At least I can't find the approval. Maybe it was, but I couldn't find it anywhere in, in the mm -hmm. minutes. This was something that had been worked on at least for a year before this, and 2016 was two years before the 2018 election, and nothing really of substance took place during that time. I don't even recall that it was at the, that we really did much of this in the admin committee then either, and I happened to be in the committee during that time. So, um, I, you know, for me, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And, um, you know, I understand the politics behind it. I understand that um, the folks that are in this room are not people that supported us during the last election. I understand all of that. Um, I understand that there is a huge push in this room for the board to change nothing. And in fact, what at least I ran on was a change platform. That, that, that the real cost of this district has been 30 years of essential board level neglect of infrastructure and other critical resources um, that at some point in time our customers, not just the people in this room, but the people that are in the valley, if that water doesn't come out of the tap, that's what the pitchforks come out for, the torches and pitchforks come out for. And I think it's important for this board, in my opinion, to really decide what we're going to focus on and how we're going to achieve those goals. And that's what I attempted to do in this draft. If the board wishes to send this to admin committee, that's great. If it wishes to form a board committee, that specifically, that's great. It's entirely up to the board to decide what to do. Um, and um, I uh, hope that this gives us a place where we can have a good discussion because that was absolutely intent of how do we get this into a process where we can start having a discussion about it. Uh, what I heard here was to take it to committee. I thought I heard at least two board members say that. Uh, I, I wouldn't be opposed to that, but if I could say something, something sure. else. Um, I like what I heard here tonight, and if this wasn't brought up, we wouldn't have heard this, all right? Uh, maybe some people were brought to a, a, a state of alarm that they didn't need to be, um, but I don't think that was anybody's intent. Um, we heard some things that need to be heard, and I don't know how else we're going to hear that in a large group that we can all interchange with, okay? So uh, thanks for the input on this, and it needs to go to, whether it's the environmental committee, there's parts of it that... You know, when you talk about the mission statement, um, I certainly need to be part of it. Now, one thing that needs to be clear about mission statements is 
This is not the first mission statement that the water district has had. There's been many water district mission statements. All right? So changing the mission statement is changing to the times. So we should not fall in love with something that was written 20 years ago. Okay? So I'm uh, quite willing to change the mission statement uh, to reflect current conditions. Okay. Thank you. Ruth, did you want to say anything? Uh, already said thank you. Okay. So, um, well, I think this needs to go back to committee. So. Do we want to start in the admin committee or do you want to split it up among different committees well, and have multiple Well, you can do it. Okay. If we follow the board policy, we give it to all the committees. And you should follow the board policy. Yes, yeah. you should follow the board policy yeah. manual, which means it goes to all the committees. I, I, I'm sorry, um, I've taken it away from the audience. So. Would, would that be in any way a um, Brown Act issue if we're holding... If we're looking at the entire um, document, set of documents in each committee, that means it was true. Well, it's a good for a possible alternative. Yes. Maybe deconstruct your draft here That's where to have the admin committee help create the general outline of the strategic plan and then start having a board workshop to where then you're able to get all board members' inputs on some of the different sections to then help get a little bit more of a cohesive plan for what is to go in. But the other thing is, if we aren't going to follow the board policy manual on what it says for the strategic plan, then we should throw it out. That's absolutely the what we need to. And you know, I think the board policy manual back in the admin committee. I think this is a great suggestion, Stephanie. I think that was something that was talked about in the March meeting. Is getting and I thought that was our plan. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to do a workshop. workshop. Well, it was to be a workshop. Right. Yes, maybe get a general outline of some of the keys, you know, the key sections of a strategic plan. Start to brainstorm maybe, maybe some of the key areas that we want to change and then we'll start to come to the workshop so we can have a little bit more of a constructive workshop from the get-go. Yeah. I do have so a comment. Are those okay, you have a comment? Are those yeah. workshops like community based? Okay. Uh, I, I, am, I would like to get Gina's input on this because I, I think that's a good suggestion, Stephanie, but I'm concerned that that, that puts us right up against, again, the, the Brown Act. Because if you're having all directors inputting, you know, I think oh, no, it'd be, it, it would be a formal, it'd be a formal, yeah. 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 Right. formal open meeting. meeting. Yeah. That's how we used yeah. to do them. Oh, I mean, they, a formal board meeting? Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a oh, formal a special board, board yeah, it's a special board workshop. Typically, they'd be at like Highlands Park, um, the senior center there, so that that way you're able to get the more open people. communication. Yeah, more people involved, too. Yeah, so there wouldn't be a brown act problem. Mm -hmm. In open there might still be a problem. But the, the dynamics of how that meeting unfolds might be interesting. Yes, exactly. That is why there's usually, a lot of times there is some sort of a facilitator. I mean, yeah. it's like, like you said, is these are usually Someone. a very long process because there is, you know, whenever you're having a public something like that, it does take So longer. who would be the facilitator? A neutral facilitator to take, to take input from the board, staff, and the public. And there's, I think we're going to get into a, a discussion. That was also talked about at the 321 right. meeting. That was well. talked about at the meeting. It was decided that at that point, no, but maybe now it's time to discuss. Well, no, I don't know that. Uh, I think the only no that was decided in 321 was the not spending the money on the consultant. Not to spend the money on the consultant. I don't facilitate it. Yeah, I don't believe that there was a no for a facilitator because no. the, the notion was that would be a lot less expensive and may even be. Uh, free. free, or maybe even less expensive, depending on what volunteer help we have. But I think when you go to the workshop, you need a neutral facilitator. Yes. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not neutral anymore. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I did volunteer a lot to pull this process through. I, I would like to see the board vote on a neutral 
person as the facilitator you know, because I do not, not for want, one. I would be very much against using Burl Ives. Or whatever his name is. Bring that guy back in. There's a lot of people. Burl Ives. There's a lot of people out there do, but now you are talking about a cost. I don't know if we can get somebody. Yeah. Well, I, I'm that's, not sure we can get somebody from the audience. No, no, I mean, we, we, but we can. Yeah, I, I think, think this is what we're going to get to the concern. I think everybody said it would be like a grand or two, and there are local resources. There are local resources, and we would have to find a, find a facilitator. I still would like to have input on that. I, I would, and I think I would like that the way to go. Well. I think it will keep it a more neutral, and everybody will have be able to voice their concerns and so forth. And the facilitator will keep it moving. Yeah, you know, that's part of the process. They don't get bogged down on one, any one issue. Um, Which is obviously going to happen. Well, it has the potential to happen. And then they build it. They'll build your strategic plan out of an outline. It has the board's direction for me to go out and, and to find a facilitator at a reasonable amount you know, to just pull a meeting together and work a meeting. Uh, not really to present a strategic plan, I, I would do so. There are a lot of people in the community that do that type of thing. But, but if I think Lou's right, we would need to basically agree on that, who that person is going to be. Um, I mean, I'm just, I'm just opposed to, I mean, it's fine for a facilitator in the meeting, but I'm, I am opposed to spending ratepayer money on a consultant to, to do this. The, the experience, I mean, I agree with Lou that the plan was just, not usable at all. That's the plan that they put together, though. And that's the, what the board put together at the time. And maybe this board will put something else together. That was put together by the board. But no, Brent, Brent and I wrote that. Well, with that board direction and with through through the board. I mean, it was a work of, it was a, it was an ongoing. It was a lot of workshops. Workshops, <laughs> and it was put together from poster boards and, and brainstorming, and it grew, and it does grow with public mm -hmm. participation. There's a lot that goes in when you enjoy it when you have the vote. And now it's just up to the board. And I understand a, a more condensed, it, I would think it's appropriate, and there's ways to do that. So, so did I hear that the direction is to send it to the admin committee using Stephanie's suggestion to put together an outline or for the committee to do the whole thing because I, I need to know what that direction is. This is one of the reasons why I don't like to bypass the board because I don't know what the board wants to do right. well, as the go, admin committee. You, so, so I'm just saying which way do we want to go on this? You go to committee, get some feedback, have a workshop then, or come to a whole board somehow. Then let's put that in the policy manual so it's clear because it's not clear right now. No, so, the policy so, manual says that it goes to all committees. But we can't without violating the plan. So just for this issue, all right, for this strategic plan, is um, is part of Stephanie's proposal. Is that encompass what Rick is talking about as well? Is getting a facilitator? I would think that we go to the admin and, and put together the process and then bring it back to yes. the full board for approval. And then and it might say we're going to do it this 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 way. We're going to have a facilitator come in. We're going to hold X amount of meetings mm -hmm. and then have the board approve that and then go. Ahead. So the first step is to do what Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what I think she. No, go to admin. Go to admin. Yes. And, and get an outline. outline. And come back with an outline. And then possibly have a uh, facilitator. Through that process, someone may volunteer. Well, we, may, we may have some names and some uh, some resumes by that point when we come back to the full board. And, and by the way, I mean, as with anything, the committee is input. And so the board may take that input and modify it even more. That's correct. Right. 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 That's correct. Right. So, so that's, but I, I believe what. I've heard, and I think it makes sense, is that um, to take uh, the process to the admin committee, which is sort of what I was expecting to happen, and what I'm hearing is we would simply work on the structure, That's not correct. on the content. Right. I would, I would recommend taking, you know, 
your headings, you know, and, and do a, a line item of each one of these that you had. You know, like teaching goals, an overview, mm -hmm. and the topics, and then we, then we come back to the board for that approval, then we start filling in. Right. And then right. we would also make recommendations, perhaps, about what that process may look like relative to workshops. Correct. And the uh, facilitator. Yeah. Yes. And we can get some resumes. Does, does that yeah. Help? First step, admin committee. Yeah. yeah. I support that. Okay. Right. We should be able to come back with a, from the admin committee with an outline. Uh, yeah. This is, this is Gina. Yeah. I just want to jump in here because I don't typically attend uh, admin committee meetings, and so I may not have another chance to uh, to provide this input. But it, it would not be a Brown Act issue or a Brown Act problem to send the entire policy or parts of the policy to all the committees at the same time, um, as long as the members of the committee of the various committees don't sort of cross discuss uh, the issue. That's where you would have a problem is if um, the majority of the board the different committees started talking to each other about the policy. I, I think that's just, I mean, I, I appreciate that. I mean, my own personal opinion, that just gets us into a real Problem. Yeah. Unrealistic to do that. Right. I think staff has enough direction. Do we need a motion on that to we'll send it to admin committee and then come back to the board with an outline? And I'll work out some logistics with Gina. Gina, does this need a motion? It, it doesn't really need a motion. I, I recommended it for the last item because I thought some clarity regarding the direction would be helpful, but it, it doesn't need a motion in order to send it to committee. Okay. Let's okay. send it to committee. Right. Yeah. We're going to send it to committee for an outline. To the admin. Admin. Okay. There's one last item on the agenda. It's the annual reimbursement to district employees is the very last day. Yes, and the uh, director of finance is here and she will discuss this memo with you all. So this is in accordance with government code um, where annually you report all employees and board members that have been compensated for $100 or more throughout the year so that the public can have a chance to review it. In theory, everyone already has had a chance to review because this would have shown up on every single bill list that we had. And so this is just the formal report to keep us in line with the W. Great summary. So, were there any questions? Do we, do we have to, don't we have to approve it? Motion to accept. I mean, yeah, you can do a motion to accept, I guess. So I, I would move that we accept the annual disclosure report of employee reimbursements for fiscal year uh, 18 19. Sorry, Rick, I passed all over you. The, Look. Well, normally you speak on the. I second the motion. I did. He said he was just going to pass it to I passed you. it to the director of uh, <laughs> Sorry. Any public comment? Think that Any co public comment? <laughs> yeah, and we just have a motion? Or yeah. a motion? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you got to call a question? Director Moran? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Okay. If no one objects, meeting adjourned. Yeah.